Please and spell your last name for the court reporter. It's uh, Mark Piper, P-I-E-P-E-R. How are you employed, sir? I'm a sergeant with the Eau Claire Police Department, and I'm currently assigned as a detective sergeant. And how long have you been employed by the Eau Claire Police Department? 19 years. How long have you been a detective with the Eau Claire P Police Department? 12 years. Right. And as a sergeant, do you have any additional duties? Yes. And what are those additional duties? I'm in charge of reviewing cases that come from the patrol division into the detective bureau and assigning those out to specific detectives. All right. And were you a uh, detective sergeant in the uh, Eau Claire Police Department as of March of 2018? Yes, I was. All right. Now, uh, on March 23rd of 2018, did you have some specific involvement uh, with the case that we are here for today? Yes, I did. And can you describe uh, for the jury, please, how you became involved on that day? Yes, I had uh, been speaking with uh, Detective Ryan Prock, who was the lead detective on some specific cases that we were investigating. Detective Proc came to me and we began discussing the fact that uh, the defendant, Ms. McCandless, Ezra McCandless, had been uh, presented at. Hearsay. It's sure not, to... not introduced for the proof of the matter asserted, but rather to show what his actions were. All right, now again, I don't know where you're going, but uh, go ahead. Permission to that. I would well, object we... to leading questions if. Okay, well, if there's some spot here, perhaps you can use some leading questions to get right. to where you wish to go. So, uh, did you discuss going to, or did you decide to go back to the scene where the defendant was found? Yes. All right. And uh, who was involved in that? Uh, myself, Detective Prock along with Detectives Groyle and Detective Streeter. All right. And uh, did you go to that scene? Yes, we did. All right. Uh, was Detective Wichke also involved? My mistake. There was five of us, yes. Yeah. All right. And uh, how did you, uh, did you drive your own vehicle or ride with somebody? I drove my vehicle onto uh, 430th Avenue while detectives Prock and Groyle went up to the residence, the home from which uh, the ambulance had been responded to. All right, and as you drove the vehicle, were you driving quickly or were you driving slow? And Slowly, I parked along the side of the road while they proceeded to the residence uh, and spoke with Mr. Sippel. All right, and when you parked along the side of the road, uh, what are you doing? Waiting in my car for them to finish the interview and uh, just thinking about some possibilities on where uh, Ezra McCandless's vehicle might be. All right. And as you uh, did that, did you notice anything that drew your attention? Yes. What did you notice? Off to the south of 430th Avenue, there's a, I guess what I would describe as a, a logging road or a just a two-track dirt road that goes off to the south into a woodlot and field area. Okay. It, go ahead. All right. And uh, as you notice that road, did you make further note of anything of, about that road? As I was standing on the blacktop, I could see what it, were clear to me to be human footprints in the mud. All right. And at that point in time, what do you do? Began looking at the footprints further to make some further determinations about what we had so that we didn't uh, disturb anything. I also looked off to the south and uh, observed two sets, well, one set of tire tracks in the mud going up the dirt road to the south. All right. And the tire tracks that you observed, did it appear to be from some type of farm equipment or a more normal type of vehicle? It appeared, the tires appeared to be small enough to be from a car. All right. And uh, 
the, that mud uh, field road, uh, as you looked at it, does it is it level? Does it go up, or is it on a decline? From the roadway, looking south, the in, it's an incline going up, a slight rise. All right, and can you see over that incline as you stand by the road? No. All right. At that point in time, now you've seen some tire tracks, you've seen some footprints. Uh, and by the way, what type of footprints? Are we talking about the shoe impression or foot impression? There are foot impressions uh, with no ridge detail from a shoe. Um, I was actually to even notice that there was what appeared to be cloth impressions in the foot impression as if the person was wearing a sock and not a shoe. All right. Uh, at that point in time, were you aware how the defendant had appeared at Mr. Sipple's residence on March 22nd as far as what she had on her feet? Yes. And what were you aware of at that point in time? Uh, the defendant was wearing uh, no shoes is what I knew. All right. And uh, as you made those uh, observations, what do you do? After a, a few minutes, a couple of detectives and I um, went off of the blacktop into the borrow ditch next to the little um, dirt trail, I guess, or logging road. Uh, we stayed in the grass as much as we could. It was springtime and there was a lot of melting snow and it was pretty muddy. And All right. I think some of them even had their work shoes on so they didn't want to get them muddy anyways. All right, and so you're, uh, are you proceeding in a southerly direction then? Yes. And which side of that dirt road were you on, if you recall? We would have been on the left side. Or the, okay. I think that's the east side. All right, uh, and do you, what do you do then? You're, you're walking south? Yes, I led the way. We uh, traveled south along the side of the trail. As we were walking, you could see the footprints at various points in the mud. So we continued walking until we crested the hill. Right. And as you crested the hill, do you observe anything that draws your attention? Yes. What do you observe? I observe a white Chevy Impala, a early 2000s model, uh, had a lot of stickers on it. I was aware that the defendant's vehicle was a white Chevy Impala with uh, round taillights. This was that same style vehicle. Right. And what do you do then? From my position, we couldn't really tell exactly. We couldn't see anything further, so we moved a little bit closer, I would say, from the road to the car. I'd be guessing, but I'd say it was a couple of hundred yards. So once we closed at least half that distance, we were able to start um, seeing some debris on the ground. Okay. And what do you do then? continue walking a little closer to a point where I can see that the uh, driver's side rear door is standing open and there appears to be a, a person lying um, partially upper torso and head out of the open door. And then what do you do? We moved closer towards the scene, trying to, again, stay off of the mud and in the grass as best we could. We didn't want to linger too long, nor did we want all five guys trampling around the area. But as I got closer, I could see that there was a deceased um, adult, male, uh, lying on the floorboards behind the driver's side seat, head and shoulders out of the uh, open door. And did you do use anything to try and uh, increase your ability to see uh, closer to that area? Earlier, I had uh, used the optics that I had, binoculars, to see what we had. And are you able, from your vantage point at that, at that time, to tell whether or not the individual in the vehicle is alive or dead? It's clear to me that this person was dead. All right. And why do you say that? Based on um, training and experience, as well as the fact that we had called to the person did not see any movement in the time that we were on scene, coupled with uh, just the nature, I guess, or the, the way that the scene looked and the um, position of the person's body. All right. 
at that point, when you now confirm that, uh, from what you can tell, that this person is deceased, what do you do? We back out of the, the scene or out of the area, uh, all five of us, get back to the roadway, and I contacted uh, Dun the Dunn County Sheriff's Department. Right. Prior to backing out of the area, do you do anything to alter or change any of the uh, physical items at that scene? No, we didn't intentionally do anything like that. I imagine standing in the grass would technically be altering something, but no, we, we didn't touch anything or do anything in, in that regard. Didn't move any of the items around? No. All right. So potentially made some foot impressions potentially in the grass area. How close to the, uh, but nothing else? Yeah, that would have been it. All right. How close to the vehicle did you actually get? 10 feet would be best guess. Okay. And uh, so then you back out. Do you secure the scene at that point in time? As best we could from the roadway. I couldn't be certain what was beyond the, the vehicle in the wood line, but we did the best we could from uh, 430th Ave. All right. And uh, keep that security at least, uh, again, as best you can until Dunn County arrives? That's correct. Once Dunn County Sheriff's Department arrives, what is your role at that point, if any? At that point, I briefed uh, Sergeant Kurt Sauls from the Dunn County Sheriff's Department and eventually Sergeant Day from the Dunn County Sheriff's Department. Explained to them uh, the nature of the scene. Uh, they began keeping a scene log, and at one point I escorted Dunn County officials into the area again just to show them what we had and where we had stepped so they st would step in the same area and not create any additional uh, footprints or leave any evidence of any kind. And then what did you do? Maintain scene security. Uh, Gave a couple uh, directives for guys. I think it was maybe going to start raining. We maybe covered some footprints with a box or a, a sheet or something. I, I don't specifically recall what they used, but things like that. And just uh, waited on scene and helped with uh, scene security. Right. you do any uh, collection of anything at any point during the investigation? No. All right. Now, uh, did you have some additional involvement in this case on March 7th of 2019? Yes, I did. And what was your involvement on March 7th of 2019? Objection. Judge, can we approach? All right. So again, so it's clear earlier this year on March 7th, did you have some involvement in this case? Yes, I did. And what was that involvement? I traveled with the prosecuting team to Madison uh, the purpose of the trip for, for me was to collect evidence from the Dunn County Sheriff's Department uh, for transmittal to the state crime lab in Madison. And what you understood those items to be would be the clothing that the defendant had worn? Yes. And how did you collect those items? On the day that we left, I met with uh, Sergeant Stalker from the Dunn County Sheriff's Department, met him in the evidence room. <coughs> received a number of uh, packages from him along with an evidence transmittal, uh, which is specific instructions for the crime lab and specifically what those items were. Collected those items from him and brought them with me to Madison. And how were the items received by you uh, as far as the containers that they were in? Uh, properly packaged with evidence tape. Were they all sealed? They were. And did you ever uh, unseal those items uh, during the time that they were in your possession? No. When you turned them over to the uh, Wisconsin State Crime Lab, uh, was that later on that same day of March 7, 2019? Yes, it was. Right. And when you turned them over, were those packages still sealed? Yes, they were. Did you do anything to alter the contents of any of those packages prior to the time that uh, you turned them over to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab? No. All right. Anything else? Nothing uh, further for Sergeant Piper. Thank you. All right. Any cross examination, Mr. Nelson? Yes, sir. <coughs> morning, Mr. Piper. Good morning. I heard you. Uh, you were talking about uh, what you did on March <coughs> was it 9th of this year. 
the crime lab trip? The crime lab trip, right? Yes. Um, and you said you traveled there with the prosecuting team, is that right? Those are the words, yes. Um, uh, you work for the Eau Claire Police Department? Yes. Um, uh, as a part of this case, you consider yourself part of the prosecuting team, is that right? No. You just used that term in front of the jury accidentally? Yes. Okay. Um, so there's times when you think of yourself as part of their team? No, I'm a police officer. I was simply bringing evidence down. Okay. I think what I meant to say was their team. I traveled with their team. Okay. So you're, you're not on a team? <laughs> no, I'm not on a team. Okay. Um, on the... This day on March, uh, was it 23rd, you were out at the scene, is that right? Correct. March 23rd, 2018, is that right? Yes. I um, want to show you some uh, pictures. It's been marked as picture uh, exhibit 633. Do you recognize uh, that area? Yes. Does that appear to be a true and accurate depiction of the entryway to the muddy road you were just describing? Yes. I'm showing you what's been marked as 634. Does that appear to be a uh, broader view of the same area? Yes. And is that again a true and accurate depiction of uh, the muddy road on March 23rd uh, as you remember it? It seemed to be a little muddier than this. I don't know when this photo was taken. Okay. But certainly the area is the exact same area, correct? Correct. The weather conditions may or may not be exactly accurate to how you were there because weather changes so much during that time of the year. Agreed? Agreed. All right. Permission to uh, move for the admission of 630. Three and 634. And those are not in evidence yet? No objection, Your Honor. All right, then exhibits 633 and 634 will be received. And you may publish them. That's the, you were talking about the entryway to, I think you called it a logging road, is that right? Yes. All right. Um, I think we, at least I've been referring to the, the muddy road. Are we, uh, either of those terms works for you? Yes. Uh, as you can see, there's a very poor gate uh, or an attempt at a gate uh, at that entrance. Is that right? Maybe it's easier to see in the next picture. And it's not as I, I see what you're referring to, but I, I guess I don't know what those are. I suppose you could put a barbed wire across it and call it a gate or something. Sure. But sure. Based on this other photo, you oh, can see. You can it. actually see it there. Yep. So there's a some fence posts, uh, and well, it's not visible necessarily in the photo when we put it up on the Elmo there's a, a, a gate uh, that could be swung across that is that right it, it appears that way yes yeah. um, it's not clear from the photo whether it would cover the entire entrance or not but there's some sort of swinging mechanism it appears right uh, not sure if it's functional but that's what it appears to be right um, and as you said this is looking south from 430th Street up on the screen on the photo on the screen as well as the one on your hand, is that right? It, it appears to be from the road looking south, yes. Um, and you had said that right at the forefoot in the, what we're calling the gate area, it appears to be frozen water, at least in the photo, is that right? Yeah, in the photo, yes. And when you were there that day, that water was not frozen, it was fluid. There was a mixture of fluid and slush and water. All right, like nice. mud and dirt. Correct. It was not a hard packed surface, agreed? That's correct. If you walk through it, you're gonna get wet. Yes. Um, and I believe on, 
shown you it's been marked as 283. Has the prosecution team showed you this photo before? No. Okay. Does uh, 283, sorry, appear to in a two-dimensional minimal form represent the area that we're talking about? Where it says footpath on there? Yes. Is that the road we're referring to? Uh, this says it's 430th, is that right? Correct. Uh, and up here it talks about uh, the driveways, and I don't think it's visible on here, the next driveway up is Mr. Sipple's driveway. Does that orientate? Yes, I just don't know addresses, so sure. that's all uh, I'm asking. And uh, this is what other witnesses have referred to the muddy road at the end of which there's the vehicle that you mentioned, correct? Okay, yes. And, and other witnesses have said this is the footpath that they observed. Then yes, that is a two-dimensional representation of this. Does that footpath that we're seeing on here in a very rough two-dimensional way roughly indicate the, where you saw those uh, foot impressions? I feel like they were a little closer to the road. Those arrows, I can't tell how far those arrows are supposed to be from the roadway. Sure. So I mean, it's not, like it's this isn't, there's no scale with this, so I don't know what that means. I don't know either. Yeah. Um, but your, what I was going to ask is at some point, the footpath that you saw disappeared as you got closer to the roadway, correct? I couldn't recall exactly where the footpath started and stopped. All I can tell you is that were footprints coming from the wood line towards the road. I couldn't tell you where they started and stopped. I don't remember exactly. I didn't take photos, nor did I look at any photos before today. You would agree that at some point when it turns into slushy mud that's fluid, there's no longer footprints was my point. Agreed? I would, I would agree that you would not see footprints on ice or frozen mud or in a grassy area that I couldn't see. I saw footprints in mud. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Um, all right. And then when you saw those footprints, you did your best to, again, not disturb them, as you've said. Correct? Correct. Uh, so you walked to the east of the roadway that we see pictured on there, is that right? That's correct. And that would be to the left as I'm looking at it, is that right? That's correct. On my red pointer, somewhere roughly in this area? Yes. Okay. And you did that so that you wouldn't disturb uh, anything on the muddy road, is that right? Correct. Um, and you continued then to walk up the, to the crest of that hill? Yes? Correct. And then as you got to, and you continued to be in the grassy area there, right? As best we could, yes. And as you were walking through the, from this position here all the way up to the car, you did your best to stay to the east of the muddy road, right? That's correct. And you did your best to probably walk on surfaces that would not leave foot impressions. Agreed? We did our best. I think there were points where we did walk in the snow, but yes. Um, you were walking on the grass that wasn't covered in snow. You didn't leave a foot impression because the surface was harder there than it was on the muddy road, right? No, I, you just wouldn't see them is all I was saying. Okay. If they were in the grass. Um, and whether that was you walking or somebody else walking, you wouldn't be able to see those impressions because of the grass, right? Correct. So if somebody had walked through the grass earlier the day before, same thing, you wouldn't be able to see those because of the grass. It would be difficult, yes. Um, 
You said you got within 10 feet of the car, is that right? That's my best guess as far as the closest I got to it, yes. And I understand that that's a rough approximation, right? Correct. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 284, does that appear to be a continuation of the previous diagram that I talked to you about? Yes. And in this diagram, you can now see uh, a representation of uh, the vehicle and the trailer. Is that right? Yes. Would it be better if I put it up on the easel? No, it's fine. I can see that anyway, so that we can all see it. And again, if you're Can I, can you see that, Mr. DeFord? What's that? Is that able for you to see? Turn that just a little bit back here. Can I stand there to ask him some questions so I can use this, Your Honor? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, you're up there. You're trying to, again, stand, uh, walk on this side, which is, again, my, the red dot is representing the east side of that money road. Is that right? Yes. And I imagine when you get to these, you observe these, what appear to be tire marks in the grass as well? I don't specifically recall the tire marks, but okay. they must have um, been there. If you had seen them, I'm sure you'd have done your best to avoid them, correct? Correct. Um, and then as you came down to the trailer, where were you in relation to the trailer when you got that close? That's a small picture, but I would have to... You need to get up and... I can show you. Sure. Your Honor? Yes, I think we can line up. You want, I stand, up? Yeah. you want to stand up and use the pointer? What's sure, very easier for you? The cool. Which button is there? The uh, red button. There you go. I would say right about the back side of this, uh, so the north side of this uh, trailer. Okay. And then maybe the uh, back side of the car. I do recall walking around the back side of the trailer here. Uh, there was some debris in this area that was looked like property from the car that was laying on the road on the ground. So try not to walk between the vehicle and the trailer. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I just ask some questions about orientation on that. Uh, now that you showed us that, um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, I saw your red pointer go again right to the north end of the green trailer marked on exhibit 284 is that fair that's fair um and then you uh i think indicated that you walked around the east side of the trailer um to the south end of the nearly to the south end of the green trailer would that be fair that would be fair and, and again i it's i don't remember way. exactly where i walked while i was there this was quite a while ago i understand um, we're just and i didn't record it so i understand um, and then in relation to the car, you walked from the trailer, when you were north of the trailer, you walked west towards the north side of the car, which would be the trunk. Is that right? I'm not saying how close, but you just walked in that general direction, correct? Or did I get that wrong? I just want to make sure that we're getting it right. I probably walked in the area by the trunk of the car, yes. Okay. And so, and I meant more, you were north of the trunk of the car. I'm not saying you were within hands reach or five feet out of it, but just you were in the area immediately behind directionally from that car. Agreed? In this, I'm referring to, you know, somewhere behind the car in this. You said immediately. I don't think I used the words immediately. I was behind the car at some point in the general north direction from the car. I can't tell you exactly where I was. And I didn't mean to use immediately to, ex uh, to explain distance as opposed to orientation. So if I confused you, my apologies. But you were behind the car in that area, right? In that general area. Okay. Um, and there was others with you, agreed? Yes. Did you see anybody walk between the trailer and the car? I don't recall anybody doing that. Did you see they may have. Sure. I understand. Um, I'm just going on what you remember. I wasn't there either, or I wasn't there. 
Um, did you see anybody walk to the south end of the trailer to the front of the car? Not that I recall. Was anybody uh, in the south side of the car looking in a position to see the license plate or the hood of the car or from that angle that you remember? Not that I remember. It doesn't mean they didn't do it. It just I don't remember specifically where people were walking. Sure. And when you, thank you, when you were there in that area, you didn't, like you said, you didn't, uh, you weren't expecting to find what you found. You, you were investigating because you were following up on your instincts and your leads, but you weren't expecting to find something necessarily. Agreed? That's probably why you didn't have a camera, is my point. Well, let me just ask this. Even if I had expected to find something, that doesn't mean I would have brought a camera with me. Okay. I, I think it would be fair to say that we were following up on some leads, and I felt fairly confident once I saw the footprint that we were going to find something. Sure. Um, I was just, you didn't have a camera with you. Agreed? Agreed. And you didn't take photos of that initial... Uh, there was no need. We were going to have a crime scene unit in there anyways. Whether there was a need or not, you didn't do it, was my question. No. talked about vehicles. You're familiar with vehicles, uh, is that fair to say? I, I would say so, yes. Uh, and when you saw the vehicle tracks in the mud, you deduced that it was a car rather than some sort of other vehicle. Is that right? I deduced that it was a passenger vehicle and not a farm implement with big tires. Okay. Um, you're familiar with Chevy Impalas? Yes. Um, fair to say that it has a rather low clearance? Yes. And that sedan would sit lower than your everyday pickup truck? Yes, it would. Uh, if somebody was in a pickup truck, they'd be in a higher seated position than someone who's sitting in that Chevy Impala. Agreed? Yes. I, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? I'd... Sure. You want me to or the court reporter? If the court reporter could just read back the question, thank you. If somebody was in a pickup truck, it would be a higher seated position than somebody who was seated in the Chevy Impala in green. Okay. Thank you. And the answer was yes? And the answer was yes. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, are you familiar? Uh, if we could uh, turn the screen off, I'm going to eventually probably want you to put on the <coughs> screen for my computer, but uh, for now, if we can turn it off. Are you familiar with uh, a 1991 Toyota pickup truck? Uh, yes, I am. All right. Would, uh, are you familiar with whether or not a 1991 Toyota small pickup is significantly higher than a passenger car? It depends if it's four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. All right. When you're standing on the black top portion of 430th, are you able to see these footprints? Or did you have to get off the road to see them? Just slightly off the road. Okay. I don't know how far, but. All right. So this will eventually be marked. I, I'm not sure what exhibit number. Uh, what's the next exhibit number, Madam Clerk? 635. Five sixty one. Okay, this will be marked uh, when we print it out as Exhibit Five Sixty One. Uh, does that look more like what the entry to that uh, road looked like when you arrived on that scene? Yes, I can't tell from how far back this photo was taken if it's on the roadway or, but yes, that's a that's it. A more accurate description of how it looked. I can't tell if this is snow, or I'm sorry, if this is ice or water. This is clearly taken many hours after I was there, because that's okay. dark. All right. So. so you can't tell if it is or not? No, I was there at 
three in the afternoon, and that's later. Okay. No, that's fine. I won't even use it. I don't have, no, I have no further questions. Any recurrence? Just briefly. <coughs> that's all he just said. Come on up, Jeff. You're on a clear approach. Is this marked? Yes. Uh, uh, is it number 561? Um, is that the printout of the photo that you just saw on the prosecuting team's uh, computer? It looks to be, yes. Okay. Uh, move for admission of Exhibit 561. Objection. Okay, well, objections note. I'm going to receive, uh, receive the exhibit. Your Honor, I'm going to... Can we approach... Of 561. Okay. Subject to the okay. noting the objection of the state, uh, court will receive exhibit 61. Permission to publish. You may. Exhibit uh, 561, which was again the picture you looked at from the prosecution team's computer, uh, that appears to be the same muddy roadway that we we're talking about. That is, yes. In the same uh, entrance with the Again, wooden posts there on the side, is that right? Yes. And uh, this, as you said, I believe was, uh, appears to be taken at night, hours after you uh, were there at three o'clock in the afternoon. Agreed? Yes. Um, and you're not sure if the liquid that we, uh, appears to be liquid in the, in the, between the gates there, uh, is in the same condition as it was when you were there at 3 o'clock, right? That's correct. And then the picture that I had previously shown you of Exhibit 633, again, that's the same area, is that right? Yes. Uh, and again, the condition of the area between the gates um, is certainly different than photo 561 that we just looked at, right? Yes. Um, and again, you're not sure how, if at all, that, if that's is more or less accurate than when you were there on March 23rd at 3 o'clock, right? Correct. Uh, and part of the, I think what you're getting at is the weather was changing and depending upon the hour that you were there, the condition of the roadway varied, right? Yeah, what you can't see on here is there's a, there was like a small stream running through here. It was right around freezing temperature. So at different times, there might have been a flow of water going across there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's the right area. I just don't know exactly when these were taken. Sure. And what we can deduce from that and what you deduced is that, again, depending upon when you're there, that condition is frozen, thawed, and in different levels of that, right? Yes. All right. That's all. Thank you. All right. The state wish to uh, avail itself of the extra redirect on that. Photo. Uh, can I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. All right. Uh, actually, Your Honor, uh, just just one thing. Uh, as far as none of the photos that you've seen, would you say they accurately reflect the way that you saw it at the time that you were there on March 23rd? That's a broad question. I don't. Could you rephrase that question? Uh, sure. Do, the, do any of those photos show the scene the way that you believe that they were, uh, the way that you remember the scene to look at that entranceway on March 22nd of, or 23rd of 2018? I didn't have a camera. I didn't take a picture when I was there. I couldn't tell you which, uh, none of these have timestamps on them. I don't know when they were taken. <coughs> It's mud, slush, snow, melting, freezing. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I couldn't tell you which one is better or worse than the other. Okay. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Detective Sergeant. Uh